<laughs> okay, so welcome everybody to week two of the Prep Skills Lecture. I'm Virginia Kruger and I'm based in Cairns, also known as Gimoy. And I respectfully acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we live, work and learn. And I pay my respects to the First Nations people and their elders past, present and future. So this week in prep skills, we're going to build on what you did in uh, week one. So week one was all about getting to know a bit of the basic culture of university, but also getting to navigate the system so that you become more familiar and can move yourself around a little bit uh, with more ease. So this week, we're going to um, build on that by getting you to think about how you can utilise all of those tools now to become active learners. So the the emphasis here is on active learning, which ties in really nicely with that independent um, knowledge that came from that brick reading from last week. So this week, we're going to look at these active learning strategies, and we're going to use this acronym uh, called the CREAM. And this comes from, I don't know if you can see, oh, yeah, there it is. This is based on the Study Skills Handbook, which was written by Stella Cottrell. Um, so if you happen to see one lying around in your library, have a look at it. It's got some great um, advice for all kinds of study skills. So we're just taking Cottrell's idea of cream and we're building on that for um, this week. So we want you to be active and we want you to take notes. So part of being an active learner is really engaging with the information that you're coming through, coming from. Thank you, Bridge, for that backup. <laughs> Um, so we want you to take notes, um, and I hope that you were taking notes last week too, and we'll get more onto note taking in a couple of weeks, like the, all of the mini skills that are um, included in that, but just do what you can for the moment. And just so you're not left high and dry, here's some quick tips, and you can find these again on pages 57 and over on the page 58 of the study guide. So the first thing is you don't have to write down everything that I say, um, just um, write down the key words you might just focus on some phrases and if you're going to write sentences just keep them really short so you want a shorthand or abbreviated version of what I'm saying today and because of this you don't need to give full explanations or descriptions or examples um, again you can just uh, use keywords to point that um, out and yeah, then you can go back afterwards and complete um, full ideas so that your notes are more fulsome so part of that shorthand too is to develop a series of abbreviations that work for you. You've probably already got them. Uh, we all text, so we've already got our abbreviations already. And you might use some acronyms too, like we're using CREAM, for example, this week. Um, so another couple of examples are ENV for environment, LS for learning styles, maybe you have PSU for prep skills or CSU for computing skills for university. You can leave out non-essential words, so words that we would normally say that are automatic, like the and ah, all of those little fillers. Um, use symbols when you can. So you might have directional arrows. You might have an up-pointing arrow for increase or the converse to have a down-pointing arrow for decrease. Equal signs. Mathematical symbols are great in note-taking. And leave out letters when you can. So um, instead of learning, you can just abbreviate it or you know, make it a contraction, put LNG instead. Or if you're a nursing person, you might be used to the acronym PTNT for patient or something like that. So this is nothing that you don't know, but this is just a reminder for you to have it be uh, cognizant of this or to think about it as you take notes today. So I had a check on Moodle this morning, people, and there's uh, of the 446 students in the cohort, 148 students have done this test your knowledge quiz. I know that it's not compulsory. However, I do really encourage people to complete this quiz after they've completed this, um, sorry, after the one level activity 1.1. So there's that little um, treasure hunt, if you like, or scavenger hunt to take you around the different parts of the CQ University portal uh, so you can navigate yourself around the systems um, appropriately. 
this is a really good spot to go to just confirm that you do know how to get around. So please do this. Please do it as soon as you can. Um, you've got 12.5 hours per week to study prep skills, so you should be able to incorporate this. Um, put up your hand if you're pleasantly surprised by your um, score in the test your knowledge quiz. Anyone? Nice work. I suspect that the 148 people that have done the quiz are in this lecture right now. What do you think, Bridge? <laughs> yeah, most of them would be here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, so maybe I'm already preaching to the people that don't need to be preached to. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. What's that? So let's get to the crux of this um, lecture today and cream. So I suspect that some people have um, read ahead and previewed the study guide for this week and probably have already done some activities too. Um, so I'm, you will know what cream stands for. But this is what we're going to focus on today. The C is for being creative in learning. The R is for being reflective. E is for effective. A for active and M for motivated. And like I said, that comes from Stella Cottrell's book, which Bridge might hold up again for us. No rest, hey, Bridge. <laughs> Oops, he's dropped it. <laughs> there we go. The Study Skills Handbook by Stella Cottrell. Have a look at it if you see it. So all of these, by employing all of these general strategies, uh, you can make your learning strategies more active so that you can optimise your engagement with the um, information that's being presented to you and embed all of these concepts into your brain more readily and more deeply so that when you come to exams and so on, they're easier to retrieve. So what does it mean to be creative in the learning process? Um, put up your hand if you see yourself as a creative student. You can use uh, your own hand, or if you wait long enough, it might be like mine and it'll, it'll raise your hand for you automatically. I've just realised that Alicia and Brock might be sitting opposite each other. <laughs> Good, excellent. So um, creative in learning doesn't necessarily mean that you are artsy. It doesn't mean that you'll bring your awesome painting or drawing or ceramic skills to um, your learning. Maybe you will, but really we're talking about creative as being curious, as being open to new ideas and being open-minded and being uh, prepared to experiment with things. So it's kind of um, melds in with problem solving, if you like. And you might experiment with learning strategies to suit your individual learning preferences which is something that we'll explore next week. So creative is a lot broader. Oh, being creative as an active learner is a lot broader than you might originally think. Um, so having heard that, does anyone see themselves as a creative student? My name, yes, Amy. Good. How, Amy? Oh, I know, a better idea. Why don't you pop in the chat? If you think you're creative, how are you creative? In what ways are you a creative student? Still waiting for some ideas, All right? Okay, let's have a look at some examples then. So some creative ways to learn are, okay, yes, I talked about art being a creative isn't necessarily artsy, but if you're a, a person who's more visual and learns better through diagrams and images, then maybe um, you'll use uh, drawing of pictures to help your recall. So you can see that the study methods are represented by flashcards in a visual um, uh, form alongside some notes. There's an illustration of margins. There's an illustration of how someone might use a mind map, then mini mind maps. And then there's a visual of someone teaching someone else in order to learn. So using that um, drawing method to reinforce those concepts in a very um, meme-like way um, is a good idea for some people. Hey, Virginia. Yes. 
Um, yes, we've, got a, we've got a problem with the chat program. <laughs> Oh, and I we? think it's because we were playing with it before. We might have done something because that's why you can't see people's chats. Um, oh, I can see people's chats, tricks. No, not anymore. I think people are struggling. They can only message us directly instead of yeah. to the group. Oh, yeah. okay. And I yeah, don't I know. See. I've never, ever seen that happen before. Yeah, right. wonder if I can change something here. Well, okay, I'll read them out. Here we go. So Emma said that Bundy Art students feel that they are creative learners by being open to new suggestions, thoughts, and opportunities. Um, Kane says experimenting with different learning environments. Okay, that's interesting. Do you want to elaborate, Kane? Uh, yeah, just I guess uh, I can't really say what learning environment is best for me yet. So just sort of playing around with what works yeah good and so that's what we mean by being open to new experiences and seeing exactly that what works and how you can make it tinker it to make it the best so are you talking about online versus classroom is that kind of, kind of thing you're talking about uh yeah and even doing a bit of both yeah exactly right good um felicity uh agrees open to finding out different learning methods um amy says the same thing she likes to explore different things Ocean says, somewhat, I think, uh, I'm open-minded to new things. And someone in the Gladstone Huddle space, maybe Alicia or Brock, is that where you are? No. Um, I create a nice environment to feel motivated. Uh, problem solving and adapting to online learning. Yes. And all, like you say, all of these are direct messages to me. I wonder if people um, can change it to everyone in their chat. Just have a play with That's that. what I'm hoping. I've just popped that into the chat. So can uh, people... some of them can't see that that option for everyone is gone. Oh yep. There you go. It's back. There. Oh, maybe you needed to have it on tricks. Anyway, I don't let's know. Keep moving. Oh look, they're coming through now. That's <laughs> there great. we go. There we go. Fantastic. <laughs> Yay, back to normal. Good fix, whoever did that. Well done. Thank you. So um keeping a notebook handy is really good. So when you get those ideas, you can write them down. Um, has anyone ever used their phone to record their notes? Is anyone like an oral learner and so they go better with recordings? Does anyone carry their phone and drop down their ideas as they're walking around and looking at the clouds? Yes, says Brock. Good. Good. Um, and then there's this one. So sometimes, you know, sometimes when you're vacuuming or you're doing some kind of activity that just takes you into the auto zone, maybe you're driving, maybe you're in the shower. Um, and that's when all of your thoughts and ideas come percolating out. Has anyone been in that sort of situation? So often when you're doing that mindless automatic stuff, that's a perfect time for your brain to just filter through, sort the ideas out, categorise them, try and make sense of them. Um, so that's a really good space to be in. And sometimes when you've been working hard reading, then it's good to go and do one of those chores and then get those aha moments. Uh, afterwards so creative thinking just while you're doing those everyday tasks is a really powerful yet simple one um how are we going there with the chat bridge yeah people are using text to voice using auto to auto to record uh voices and a transcript so forth so they seem to be have been playing around with a few things yeah fantastic good. good we've got a bunch of creative learners here fantastic and Kane, you've hit the nail on the head there where you said eureka moments whilst washing yep. the dishes. Perfect. Thank you. I've got lots of dishes at home to be washed if you're interested. Anybody is trying to. <laughs> he lives too far away. Sorry, Bridge. <laughs> so being a creative learner means being a creative problem solver and a lateral thinker. So thinking outside the box. And there are some techniques that can help you with this too. Um, and this is something for the chat for you guys. So we can use analogies to help us remember information or concepts as well. So, for example, if I said to you, writing an essay is like making a cake because, put your answer in the chat. So this is an analogy, a creative way of approaching um, learning. Writing an essay is like making a cake because... There's a recipe, yes. the layers, mm -hmm. instructions, mm -hmm. steps to follow. 
beautiful ingredients. Look how you've come across all of those commonalities really easily. Nice. So yes, you follow a recipe, you set ingredients, and you make a mess, and then you clean it up again. But it's still good at the end. Okay? Raw form, all, all finished. <laughs> okay. So that's um, the C in the cream. Now we're going to look at reflection, the R in the cream acronym. So here's something else for you. Try this one, another analogy. Self-reflection is like a window because... You look and reflect, says Kat. Thank you. Any other ideas? This is a bit harder, perhaps. Oh, I like that, Amy. You can look out many windows to see different views. It's like you're looking at different parts of yourself, different views of yourself. I like that. There is more than one view. I like this multiple perspective of self-concept coming through. Yeah, that's great, Emma. Yeah, nice. It can be personal at times because you might only see one side. It's hard to see yourself sometimes, so you've got to devote the time. That's nice, Paige. I like that. See what doesn't work in trial and error, and it requires temp attempting different objective... Oh, sorry, getting my words all tongue-tied or getting myself tongue tied objective perspectives of self enabling view into blind spots hopefully that's right oh i like that l looking out to look in perfect thank you everyone so as i said r is about reflective and again now all of these hands are still up let's see if we can put them down all right Jeez. Zoom's working well for us today. Um, put up your hand if you think that you're reflective in your approach to your studies. Hands going up. Nice. Would anyone like to open their mic and tell us about how they're reflective in their approach to their studies? No? Anyone want to put something in the chat? like Cam's typing something or oh, no. All right. So at university, we really um, encourage people to self-reflect. And in fact, you're required to do it in a lot of your units, um, in all of your degrees. So at every point through your study, or at many points through your study, you'll be required to write in a critically reflective way. So for example, when you're on teaching practice or nursing placement or um, on a project in an engineering company, you need to be able to reflect on what you've done and look at ways that you can improve it. So this critical self-reflection is all about making yourself the best you can possibly be in steps as a student in your undergraduate studies as a student, but also in your undergraduate studies as a developing professional in your field. And then as you become a professional in your field, reflecting so that you can improve and make progress both for yourself, but also for your industry. So critical self-reflection is a, a starting point for progress, um, both for self and professionally. And it's really important uh, to engage in this because it clarifies your thinking about your own practice, but also about the concepts that you're engaging in. And it helps you take ownership of your own learning. So the more you're thinking about self-improvement, the more you're thinking about improving yourself as a student, and therefore you have to be um, an active and independent learner and take responsibility for how you're engaging with your studies. And as I said, it's great practice for undergrad because many um, disciplines require that self-evaluation as part of assignment writing too. And not only this, it broadens your outlook. So by developing yourself, you also think about how you might be developing your interpersonal skills. So um, remember last week we talked about enabling attributes and cultural competence. So this is a way of developing your cultural competence um, 
through any subculture that you um, might be um, engaging with. So the way we do this, um, uh, the way you can do it on an individual level is a uh, personal learning journey so that you can record your progress. And you can find these all over the place on the internet. So there are study blogs there. Um, there's wikis that people have to, um, but also you'll develop your own personal portfolio over time of um, self-reflections just through the assessments that you do. And if you're interested in doing this, uh, but would like a bit more information, there's a really good little um, box with some starting tips in the study guide, module two, of course, and that's on page 41. Um, so if you've got time and you're that reflective writer already, then um, maybe you can have a go at doing some reflective writing. Uh, just in the chat, does anyone do some regular journaling? Some people uh, journal every morning, some people journal at night. I had a student who just used to acknowledge three great things that, used, that happened during the day. Um, it was for, for a mood boost, but it was also that um, building gratitude in her practice too and made her think positively about the work. So we've got a lot of people um, who already journal, right? Every day, mostly, yep, not perfect. Um, irregular, lots of I do's, lovely. Great. So that's just an example of the study block. So um, some people do it uh, daily, but you might also do it at the end of each study week, just review how your week went. Or you can see here that this person's probably done one at the start. There's a midterm reflection, and we're assuming that um, there'll be an end of term reflection as well. So it's good to pop in your diary if you're not that kind, of, if you're not disciplined enough like me to do it daily, then uh, you might want to put it in your calendar just to um, take some time to reflect. But in your learning portfolios A and B in this unit, you will be writing um, reflectively in response to some of these, uh, some of the questions. So that can influence your personal worldview. So it'll help you be a critical thinker um, because you're critically thinking about yourself. And we don't mean that in a judgmental way. Um, this critical practice here is more about um, thinking through things and analysing. Um, and we don't like to judge ourselves. I mean, there's some judgment incorporated because we're thinking about how we can improve. But this is not a place for beating yourself up. It's not a place for being down on yourself. It's about acknowledging what you do well, but also how you can make things better. And so there can be a whole lot of people at, um, and things that have been influencing your thinking too. So your thoughts or your worldview might be based on your family culture or where your family is from. Um, it might be influenced by your friends, uh, your partners, of course. Uh, your work colleagues can have a huge influence on your worldview. Uh, the community groups that you participate in, um, you influence them and they influence you in turn. Um, your experiences through childhood can also um, impact on your ideas and your values, where you are from. So uh, whether you grew up in Melbourne or whether you grew up in the Cape or whether you grew up in Berlin, um, all can have an impact on the values that you hold. Um, your race, your cultural background, the school that you went to and the training that you received, who you received that training from, your work history, your religion can influence you um, and your age can influence too, you too. We know that certain age groups uh, in a general way um, also have a pattern of values that um, bind them together. We've all heard of baby boomers and millennials and X, Gen Xs and all that. And travel is a huge thing that can influence um, your worldview. So there's a lot to think about about what makes us who we are and what we value and what we believe. So um, it doesn't mean that we stay there. We can still broaden how our horizons, think critically about our experience and how that's influenced how we participate at university um, and how we can make that better. So I encourage you to have a look at uh, activity 2-7. That's on page 43 of the study guide. Um, if you want to reflect further on that, 
Um, and people who are in essay writing, you'll be doing similar kinds of thinking when you're thinking about your worldview as well. So this critical self-reflection is based on um, the idea that self-knowledge is the beginning of self-improvement. And that's uh, written by uh, a quote by Balthazar Ration. And this is Paul. Uh, you'll see his banner on the Prep Skills uh, Moodle page. And he actually uh, started with a different view of self evaluation and Prep Skills overall. So he says self evaluation should be a part of, uh, sorry, a vital part of any learning journey. When self doubt came over me, I would read back over the things I had written in Prep Skills especially the comments to myself. And this was particularly powerful because as I said at the beginning, um, Paul was a bit skeptical about um, what prep skills could offer him, but he really appreciated the unit at the end of this. And especially this um, skill or um, awareness of how to reflect more deeply. Okay, let's leave reflection behind for the moment. And let's look at effective. So can anyone relate to this scenario, this study organisation? Just pop something in the chat if this speaks to you. Pop something in the chat if this frightens you. Ooh la la, says Amy, is that a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> Cooking supplies, Kyle. Okay, your pantries looks like that. Liberty, nice. <laughs> I know, it's very attractive, isn't it? But we this is demonstrative of something that um, can actually stand in the way of you studying effectively. Does anyone have any ideas? It, what's appearing in the chat bridge? Everybody seems to be quite impressed with it. Yeah. The organizational skills. Yeah. Um, perfectionism is the word that's been used and that can definitely be a positive and a negative yes, when it comes that, to studying folks. That's exactly uh, perfe right. Perfectionism can be procrastination. Fantastic, Brock. Exactly, Brock. And this is what point that we'd like to, make, to get across here. Remember, you have 12.5 hours per week per unit. And how long do you think it would take to set this up? I think it would take me, oh, half a day maybe if I got everything straight, made the lay sure the labels were all right. And that half a day is half a day that I'm not spending on my studies. So, yes, organisation is effective, but we need to balance where we're going a bit overboard to what we call virtuous, um, being virtuous instead of effective. So virtuous is uh, the kind of things where you're looking for approval, where, where everything is seemingly beautiful on the surface, but maybe underneath, you're not getting the work done. So somehow the people who are, uh, tend to run their perfectionism, you need to pull back on that a little bit if it's starting to impact on your study time and think about ways you can spend your time more effectively. It's beautiful, sure, but... Did the essay get in on time? So if you want to explore that a little bit further, have a look at activity 2-8. It's interesting to see, quickly puts their head down to see and note that activity. <laughs> so the other thing is um, we can look really busy like we're doing work, but are we being, really being effective with our time? So there's a similarity here where you spend, look busy um, making everything organised but are you getting the work done? Are you spending all your time organising your schedule or are you getting the work done? So keep an eye out for that little self-sabotage pattern or those two. So some really basic ways to get, uh, to make sure that you're being effective is making sure you've got a dedicated study, study space, that you've got your study resources organised, You've got time management practices in place. I think there's a fourth. And dedicated times for study. Is there a fifth? Yes. Goals in place are important as well. So these are just for you to think about for the moment. Have you got a study space organised? Looks like most of you have. You've got all your study materials at hand. 
you've got your schedule and you're here, obviously, you've got that schedule in place. Hopefully you've got another nine or so hours set aside for um, prep skills study. And all of these things are guided by some clear goals. So let's talk about time management a bit. Is this you or are you a do it now kind of person? Do you tomorrow do tomorrow? Very nonplussed faces on the screen here. That's a good sign. <laughs> Not interested in you, Mr. Panda, and your values. Just get it done. <laughs> okay, so let's see if this works, seeing we've got the um, bit of trouble with uh, Moodle today. Can you put a stamp or a little squiggle on the star that represents you most? In terms of effective time management, do your time management skills need attention? Do you tend to more towards procrastination? Or are your time management skills excellent? Are you always organised? Okay, we've got some, a lot of people sitting in the middle there. Good, looks like we've got a few changes. I love that lone squiggle, that lone procrastinator <laughs> down there on the end. Cat, thank you for that multiple stamps there. Good. Okay, so we've got a nice range here. Um, I'm happy to see that people are, are not here. It's good to be relaxed a little bit sometimes. Um, yes, ADHD can impact on um, your time management skills and organisation, absolutely. Thank you everyone for contributing there. I'm gonna just clear those now. Wow, that's awesome. And look at that little love heart in the corner. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to ask you to stop because I'm going to clear. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. That. All right. So we've got a good range of people's um, rating of their time management skills. It means everyone's got something that they can improve on. Um, so... Activity 2-11 in the study guide just gets you to map out exactly where you're spending the time. And it's it can be a little bit difficult because we know that every day is not exactly the same. And if we look over a week, we've also got our weekend activities to incorporate, um, depending on where your weekend is, of course. So you might look at this as a, like a generalisation, how many um, over 24 hours or over a full week. So just be aware, uh, note down generally uh, how much time you spend on each of the act activities and whether they do actually add up to one day or the time for a week. Um, and then think about where you can actually stop some of those activities. So more often than not, it's in this zone here. We can put our gaming aside or put, you know, leave off a few hours of gaming don't have to watch all of that Netflix series this week. So, on. so often this is the space that people can take time away to add to something else like here. So I really hope at this point that all of you have mapped out in your schedules where you've got that 12.5 hours per week per unit across your week. Mapping it out really gives you a good idea about how much time you need to commit. Um, just raise your hand. Who has mapped out um, their units hours in their schedule? Are you there? Good. Thank you. Well, look, I really recommend that you go and do this. Um, it's uh, illuminating where the time goes. And remember, this sounds kind of doomsday-ish, um, <laughs> but remember that your time is finite. You only have so much. Um, so use it well, people. So some tips, consider your biological prime time. Has anyone heard about biological prime time before? Open your mic. Yes, Brock, do you want to talk about it? Um, it's kind of like an awareness on what time of the day you like to work best and how you can adapt your schedule to work around that. Absolutely. What's your biological prime time, Brock? Um, probably in the daytime. Mm -hmm. As like I tend to get tired at night time, so I like to be fully aware. Yeah, good. good. Um, I don't know about you, but my prime time is now from nine till eleven is my clearest time, 
And, the, and research shows that this is the best time to do maths. And that's why we've got the maths classes at 9 till 11 in the morning, because that's supposed to be the best time for you to be switched on. Um, and then I, I'm good again at about between one and three. At three, I need a sugar hit or a sleep. And then I have another wind, say, from five to seven. So they're my biological prime times. When I need to write or do some heavy reading, I try and schedule it then. Um, so think about that when you schedule your study time or the tasks that you do at those particular times. Um, Practising the art of intelligent neglect is another um, timely tip too. So those things that are at the bottom of the priority list, leave them. Leave them for a couple of days. Um, you don't have to mop the floor every day. Um, leave it. You don't have to tidy the pantry so all the can labels are all at face in the front. <laughs> Leave it. Um, and if you know your procrastination patterns, then start thinking about strategies that you can use, not just one, but multiple strategies you can use to interrupt your procrastination patterns because we know that procrastination patterns uh, will self-sabotage and get in the way of you enjoying your studies as well as getting them completed. Um, learning to say no is a big one for parents, for a lot of people, um, but sometimes you just have to get people used to you saying, no, this is my study time. I'll be with you. I'll see you. Or I'll call you in two hours. So say no, set your boundaries, protect your study time. And remember to reward yourself. So it might just seem like a little thing, but as soon as you submit an assignment, do something nice for yourself. Acknowledge that the work that you've done and the stress that you've put into it maybe um, and give yourself a little reward. So do it for little things, but also maybe have something a little bit uh, bigger planned for the end of the term or at the, for when you submit an assignment that you've been working really hard on. Look after yourself, pat yourself on the back. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a nice little thing in the chat. Get it off your plate. Delegate. Oh, yes, Kyle. Kyle, I like it. You've had a few good tips in there. I've enjoyed. Thank you. <laughs> so to help you plan, um, on campus students, you'll be talking more about this in your um, tutorials tomorrow. Uh, but in the CQ handbook, there are some planning tools that you can use if you haven't come across them already. Um, there's the uni term planner here, which is um, a calendar sort of vibe. And then there's a weekly planner as well. Um, maybe you've looked at some of the discount softwares. There might be some planning tools there. Um, but this one's more for undergraduate students. So I'd be looking at these two um, most carefully. You should be able to find something from the ALC if you can access that. They've got a really nice weekly and term plan as well that you can adapt. Thank you, Bridge. That's great advice. Of course, everyone should have this document up on in their study. It's really important that you keep track of um, where we are in the term. So we're in term two now. We're in week two. Um, Cairns people, we're lucky we've got show day here, but it's also good to know where the um, midterm break is. There are no classes in midterm break, so this is a really great opportunity for those people who've fallen behind a little bit to catch up. Um, if you're up, uh, up with everything, then you get to have a little break, or maybe people uh, know that the final part of the term is going to be busy, so you might use that time to catch up and get ahead a little bit. So being aware of those gifts of time during the term is a really important part of your scheduling as well. But it's also good to keep up with the numbers of the weeks because you often know when your assignments are due in um, those numbered weeks. So having that up is really important. Um, uh, you also need to be aware of things like sent to stay the last day to withdraw um, without failing. And the other really important day is the red day. So for you, you'll get your term results uh, for all of your units on the 3rd of November. So just having all of that, that um, information in front of you is just another way to keep you organised and imprinting the pattern of the academic calendar on your brain um, helps things synthesise too. So this is one term planner. Um, you can see that this person's got four units. Um, and they've got the uh, due dates for their assignments in each unit. 
across the term and they've got the working time that they're going to dedicate to each assignment logged in there as well. They haven't planned to start this assessment here in week five. They've started in week two and they're going to project plan it until it's due. So these are the kinds of things that you need to think about when you're planning too, um, not just the due dates, but how much time you think you could need to commit to it and starting early. You can always work step by step and your lecturers will often point out to you the kinds of assessment milestones that you need to be taking each week in order to get those things in on time, especially in steps. They might not in undergrad. So it's good for you to start thinking about your assessments in this long-term planning way, not just about the due dates. But I think that maybe some of you are doing that already because I know that some people have already finished their module one answers for learning portfolio A the work. Um, and this is another one, so more individual. So this is the space where you map out your work times, when you've got to take the kids to sport, uh, when you've got your gym classes, uh, when you've got your meeting for the chess club, all of that sort of stuff goes in here. The thing that you need to remember when you're planning this out is travel time. You're not going to magically finish work at nine and then start your study session and go from nine till 11. So make sure you work in travel time, eating time, and also make sure you put downtime in there. I also like this one because it's got the priorities to finish this week and also some things that you could get done um, if you finish your priorities. So having four priorities over a week is a really nice, uh, low stress kind of way to approach the week. Then we drill down, we can put those priorities in a list for um, each day. So they're more general sort of jobs to do, but you can imagine that there'd be other things in there for a, a student, like Zoom lecture, Monday morning, 10 o'clock. And then for some of you, Zoom lecture, 12 o'clock. And uh, we live in a digital age, so I know that there's a whole lot of apps out there to help people organise their time and increase their productivity. Um, does anyone use a particular app for time management or to organise themselves? Pop it in the chat. Let's see what you've got. I'm always interested. There's always new ones coming up. A few people typing. So Forest. Just, yeah, go for it, Bridge. Sorry. I've, I've never heard of this forest, these um, notes on iPhone, just a good old book, Google Calendar, to-do list, yeah. Right. Oh, there's a planner app on your iPhone. Uh -huh. Oh, I like that one, Kiana. She sets the timer on her clock app for 2.5 hour, well, hours of um, study work. Good keeping yourself there and then you reward yourself afterwards hope so oh yep. that's there's task. nothing wrong with using a paper planner absolutely right. nothing wrong with it yep i'm old school i use paper this is my my planning book here <laughs> good thank you everyone oh there it is forest is an app that will lock you out of your apps on your phone for the time you want to study for you also grow a forest each time you study. Oh, I love the idea of that. I'm going to have mm. a look at that. Thanks, Amy. Oh, sorry, Hannah. Okay, let's move on. So the other thing, um, and you can read a more elaborate um, story from Laurie. So Laurie um, is one of the lecturers in STEPS, and some of you will come across him in Indigenous Australians and Education or Indigenous Australians and Health. Um, and he started as a STEPS student. Um, or a TEP student. So he strongly believes that just showing up is the biggest hurdle that you get through to start your study for the day or for the session or even for the term. So just showing up means that you're getting yourself there and from there, everything else can only improve. You can open your mind um, to receive uh, the information or whatever, um, but just showing up is the most important step. Read more about his story in the, in the study guide, please. Um, it's a lovely passage. So 
Uh, the excerpt is, I believe, one of the most important things as a person uh, can do to achieve success, turn up. In obtaining a tertiary qualification, students are actually training to be professionals. So there's that work ethic involved in there too. And yes, we're telling you to push yourself and commit and so on. But as before, it's also really important that you schedule some downtime to yourself for yourself. Um, looking after yourself means, uh, or pushing yourself also has to be balanced with recharging your battery. Uh, you don't want to burn out, especially in steps. You've still got an undergraduate course to go after that. And maybe some of you are thinking about postdoctorate, uh, sorry, postgraduate studies. So we all know how to do this. We don't always do it, but remember to exercise, get enough sleep, get enough natural light, uh, good diet, fresh air, and in the green room, enjoying nature is really important too. I think there was a Japanese study that said we need seven minutes of time in nature every day. So still thinking about organising your space and everything, these are some camp student study spaces actually that they've shared with us. You can see that um, they're all beautifully organised, nice and tidy for the photos. <laughs> we'll observe that. We're sure that it's not as beautiful as that every time. Uh, you can see that some people have got dedicated rooms for their study spaces and not everyone has that luxury. Um, uh, there are some familiar little creatures in there to make it comfy. If you expand this picture back, then there's a drum kit, a dog and a guitar. And by the end of the term, Lock, Lockie had moved the musical instruments out of there because they were just too distracting. So he made it nice and comfy, but also realised that he needed to review it. Um, this one is just a nook in someone's lounge room. So all of the family is behind the, uh, this student. But having that enclosed space in front of her, she was allowed to not have visual distractions from her family um, activities. So this is all great, you know, if you've got the space and everything, but for some people, um, this will be the study space. And this little box might um, have a blanket in it that's spread on top of their bed. And when that blanket is spread on the bed, then there's a psychological switch that's being made that this is study time. And then they can lay everything out from that box on the bed and that's the study space. So if that's your circumstance where you only have a tiny uh, or I don't have a permanent desk, then just do something to create that switch from non-study mode into study mode if you can. It's it can be powerful, even though you might not have the space um, to build a study space for yourself. So that was all effective, lots of organisation stuff. Let's move into the second last acronym uh, letter now, and that's A for active. And this is what it's all about, active learning strategies. So an active learner takes charge of their own learning. They are responsible. They are committed, and you've all committed. You've joined steps. You're here. You're, you've turned up. You're taking notes. You're getting involved. I mean, look at that chat. It's just going on. So just to check in with yourself, though, remember we're talking about critical self-reflection all the way through this. Um, I want you to have a look um, after the lecture. On page 56 of the study guide, there's a table that gets you to look at active learning versus passive learning behaviours. Um, and they're kind of matched. So if you've landed more on the passive learning side of that table, then you can go over and start to think about ways you can go over to the corresponding active learning behaviour. So it's a really good thing for you to check in. Um, and it could be that sometimes you're more passive um, and sometimes you're more active. You might oscillate between the two. But if you can move yourself more over to the active learning styles, then uh, you'll be in a really good space, three steps, undergraduate course and work, life as well. So have a look at that. So active means being attentive in class taking notes because if you're taking notes it means that you're taking the information not just here but down through your body and incorporating it there's something about using your muscles that embeds it more deeply in your brain another good thing is to have your mobile on silent or maybe out of the room or often in your bag yep. 
phones are the arch nemesis of study. Look, it's people just looking sideways and turning off their phone now. I saw that. <laughs> Good on you. Do your homework. Yeah, make sure that you complete the week's activity, like week one's activities um, on time so you can start fresh for week two and so on. If you've been set homework to prepare for before class, then do it. You'll just maximise the class's learning um, by having that homework completed. You can move through quickly if everyone's informed and going uh, starting from the same point. So do your homework. Um, I don't have to say anything about this to you guys, but getting involved in discussions is really good in class, but also online. And maybe we'll stop just here for a moment, Bridge. Is there anything in the chat uh, that's worth? Uh, yeah, somebody said, uh, Kyle, you know, you sort of you dress and you go to, to your study space and you study like you're going to work. Somebody yeah. said, no, I prefer to be in my PJs. I'm thinking different strokes for different folks. Both yes. of them are really good strategies. Exactly right. It always reminds me of the getting dressed for work. Uh, reminds me of uh, a student called Josh uh, that we had on Cairns campus. And he used to turn up at 8 o'clock every day. And then he would work through. He'd stop for lunch, but then he'd finish by 2. And he did that Monday to Thursday. And then if he'd finished everything, then his automatic reward was a long weekend. He'd take Friday off and Saturday and Sunday, of course. Um, so that was his plan to get all of his work done from 10 to 2 every day. And if he thought that he wasn't going to get it done by Friday, then he'd extend his Thursday and keep working. Uh, so I say, be like Josh, 10 to 2. Yep, get it done. And then you get that. There are a work. number of students who do that. They think of study a university as work that they have to spend this much time, they, even if they can study at home, some of them, if they're close to campus, they come on campus and they get their work done and then they can go home free. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Good plan. I hope you can maintain it, people. Um, and so uh, being another aspect of active learning is to being able to problem solve. And most importantly, um, part of active learning is asking questions and you'll all have all of these questions going through your head all the time. What does that mean? Oh, I have to look up that. Where do I find that again? All of those questions are going through your head as you're listening. Um, and it doesn't mean you need to ask them. You can write them down to follow up. But if you're not sure, if you've looked around for longer than 15 minutes and tried to solve something yourself, then ask one of us. That's what we're here for. Or another student. So being asking questions is also being active. Some people think that when you're asking questions, you're not being an independent learner, but that's not true. If you've got a question that you can't solve yourself, then it's important to ask. Being active in that way does not mean you're dependent. Okay, the last one, cream of cream is M for motivated. And Yes, it's about goals. So when you're motivated, it means that you have a purpose and that purpose is clear. And to make that purpose uh, more of a reality, we use goals to help us get there, right? And by setting them, uh, writing them down and articulating them and thinking them through really clearly means that we're more likely to get to that goal. Um, we might, to motivate us, we might also use inspirational images. Some people like those quotes that are on the wall. Lots of access coordinators send out little motivational messages and memes to keep people um, thinking and to keep their heart full about their studies. Um, so they, they are really useful for some people. And for some people, it's just like the picture of their last holiday or their favourite surfing shot or whatever. But if the, whatever associates that full heart with your study is a really good thing. And so that might be on the wall. It might be on your um, screensaver. It could be on your phone. be anywhere. But just having that little image to keep you motivated is, is pretty powerful. So um, here's another student space. Um, notice that it's probably effective rather than virtuous, right? But what I want you to focus on is her wall. So notice here there's a whole lot of things going on that um, help her with her study. You can see the academic calendars there. 
Um, she's got some grids there with um, the prime numbers and composite numbers. She's got the timetables up there. Guess who's studying FMU, that term? Um, but notice along the top, she's got quotes as well. Um, and I can't read them fully, but some of them have come from herself, like little um, insights uh, that she's had into her own, her own self, but also there are some inspirational quotes that are meaningful for her there. So um, I'm wondering uh, what people's study spaces look like and what sort of things you've got there to keep your heart full and to keep you motivated while you study. Would anyone like to share anything? Yes, Kiana, if you're not strong on tables, it's a good idea to have those tables there to check while they're still being embedded in your brain. <laughs> and Kyle, you're reading about your field of interest. Excellent. That's good. That's a great motivator. Look, if you can remind yourself why you're doing steps, I think that's going to be a really great motivator to make sure you finish on a high. Absolutely. And I don't know how many of you have completed the My Contract activity from last week and whether you sent it through to your support lecturer or uh, tutor. Um, but a lot of students keep that up there too because often those initial motivations for starting steps are written there. And they might have something like, you know, I want to uh, show my kids that they can go to university too. Like all of those little goals and things that you value, that you bring to your studies and your goals are important to remember. And that's interesting, Brock, that's a good point. Uh, so Brock says all of that, um, especially the fluoro colors are a bit jarring for, uh, for you. So um, you get to make that the way you want it. If you like neutral tones or textured things, then make that, make your study space be what you want to be. But yeah, interesting. Um, Brock, pay attention next week when we talk about learning styles. So I'm really fascinated. Anything else in the chat, Bridge? No? Okay. So this is um, the crux of the M for me. So getting motivated and having these goals. So notice here, this um, image has S-M-A-R-T, another um, abbreviation, oh, sorry, um, acronym. So we're going to talk about setting goals that meet these specific criteria. So the S is for specific. When you write the goals, it must be very, very detailed, well, not detailed, but very specific. It must be very clear about what you're going to achieve. We have to find some way for that goal to be measurable. How do we know that it's been achieved? You have to be able to tick it off clearly. It needs to be achievable or attainable. It needs to be relevant. And something that everyone forgets in their learning portfolio A. So here's a hint, everyone. Do not forget the T aspect of um, the SMART goal for your learning portfolio A. They must have a limiting time frame. There must be a due date for that um, goal to be uh, reached. So if we had this as a goal to get fit, and often this is someone's goal at the beginning of the new year, I just want to get fit. But there's so many ways that people can get fit. This really um, isn't specific enough. We don't know when that person has reached that goal. Okay? Like where does fitness end? Um, it's probably achievable, it's probably relevant, um, and there's also no timeline. So this as a goal would not fit SMART criteria. However, if I build something in here that's much more specific, this will get me to that same goal of getting fit. So this second one meets the criteria. To get 30 minutes of exercise, running or swimming, every day before work. So even though it doesn't mention the aspect of fitness, we can see that this is really specific about what I want to do. It's very clear if I've done it or not. So it's clearly measurable. 30 minutes of exercise every day before work. Very clear that whether I've achieved it or not. It's achievable, 30 minutes every day. 
Um, it's relevant to my overall uh, strategy of getting fit and it has a deadline. Okay? It's every day before work. So more often than not, your deadline will be by um, the last day of term two or you'll have an actual date there. This one's a little bit more. So you can see the difference between the first and the second one in how the second one is more likely to get you towards your goal. If you enact that goal, it's more likely to get you to the overall goal of being fit. So I've already told you about which one's a SMART goal. So there you go. It's pretty obvious. But SMART, remember, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time bound. And when you look online, uh, SMART goals are prolific. They're everywhere. But sometimes they have similar words uh, for the A and the R. So don't be confused by that. So what about this one? Complete the Bachelor of Nursing degree as a part-time online student at Seek University um, by the end of 2028. See how clear that is? It meets all of those criteria. Oops. Yep, so I'll just let you have a look at that for a moment again. Okay. So um, another form of motivation, and you'll see a lovely video made by Trixie um, uh, this week that talks about the hero's journey. And so in a nutshell, um, the hero's journey is a device that's used across many movies, many films. So we have a quest. The, the hero of the story has a quest. They've got a, a goal that they need to meet. But along the way, they might have uh, obstacles that get in the way. They might have um, things that distract them. They, but they will have times when they're going really well and then all of a sudden there'll be some obstacle that uh, takes them off the path a little bit. So uh, Trixie's video uh, talks about this hero's journey and how it applies to her life as a student and um, in her career, but also how it relates to your studies and how things, we have a plan and we hope that they go well, but we also need to be aware that there will be obstacles and challenges along the way and that we need to prepare for them. So please have a look at that video. Um, and then I believe that there's a forum that goes with it too, if you'd like to comment on it. So the other thing about uh, motivation um, is the ripple effect. So with your motivation and you're moving forward uh, towards your goals in your life here at, at university, this also has an impact on the people around you. So I mentioned earlier that some of the motivation for some parents to be here is to make a better life for their children, but also be um, a role model for their children uh, with what you can do with your life and realising your goals and getting a tertiary education in some cases. So children are the immediate impact for um, your motivation and your uh, experience at university. But it also happens for your friends and your family. And maybe you're here because a friend of or a family member has been through steps and told you all about it. But I'm guaranteed that some of you will be talking to your to the people around you um, and um, introducing them to steps. Uh, but it's wider than that. Um, through having your experience at university has impacts for your um, your income, your job security, and your general health. And then when we talk about motivation, we also need to talk about self-sabotage because self-sabotage is uh, those series of or those behaviours that get in the way of you achieving your success. They get in the way of your goals. And we do this to ourselves. Those staying up too late, watching Netflix, staying out too long, saying yes to um, social commitments that you really uh, should say no to because that's your study time. Um, planning and organising at the expense of actually doing work and so on. Does anyone have any um, self-sabotage behaviours that they would like to put into the chat, chat to share? I'm sure that there's quite a few that we share. Bad one for me is binging on 
streaming services. Making excuses for yourself, Kiana. Mm -hmm. All the ones I mentioned, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's not just one, <laughs> there'll be several. Oh, yes, Kane. Yes, that's a good one. You've got to make sure you back up your work. Yep. Yes, Kana, overthinking things um, is a way of self-sabotaging. Instead of breaking it down into manageable chunks, just like letting yourself get stuck there and getting overwhelmed. Yeah. Oh, yes, YouTube, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I think we share a lot, people. So here we are. Over summing up. So, in all, successful students are active learners and they are problem solvers and they explore possibilities. So, they tap into their creativity. Active learners pause to consider how they learn best. So, they stop and reflect on their practice, stop and reflect on the knowledge that they're investigating, um, and think about how they can do things better. Active learners are focused and organised and they use time management skills. So they're effectively organised. Active learners take ownership of their learning. So responsible, it's active. And active learners set goals and keep themselves motivated. So more often than not, we're here because the motivation comes from within but sometimes we need to look outside for that motivation too. So that's where that goal comes in and where all of those little rewards come in. Patting yourself on the back, that's a big way, a long way. Okay, so what we've got here are the questions for module two for learning portfolio A. Um, now let's, I'll just read through them quickly. So the first one says, according to module two, why is self-reflection considered a valuable skill at university? Provide at least two reasons. And in the study guide, you'll find a whole range of reasons. So take your time to read through that and really understand the, the um, requirement for self-reflection at uni. The second question is asking you to write some SMART goals. So there'll be one short, one medium, and one long-term goal. And those, what those timeframes mean are in the study guide, okay? So make sure that you meet all of those SMART criteria when you write those goals. And remember, the timeframe is important. It's a common element that uh, students leave off. So T for timeframe, um, think you have to add a deadline. The third question for Learning Portfolio A Module 2 is, how will you manage your time so that you can devote yourself to your studies? Describe how many units you are studying this term and how you will distribute the expected hours per week for these units across your week. So here you need to elaborate on how many units you're doing in the term and how much time you're expected to study, then give an indication of how those hours are allocated across the week. So be quite specific in your answer for number three. And the final question is, Describe two specific time management strategies mentioned in module two of the study guide and how you will use them this term. So try not to use one that you've already, that you're already uh, using. Try and uh, test your creativity and choose something that you um, mightn't have thought of before or have wanted to try for a while but haven't uh, really managed to manifest it yet. So I hope you can see the connection between what we've talked about today and these learning portfolio questions. Another really good way to start your week when you're thinking about what's coming up is to start with those learning portfolio questions. Read the questions before you start reading through the study guide because that will also help focus your reading. So hopefully that's a tip that will make you more effective as well. Any questions here? Um, Bridge, is there anything that we need to address in the chat? Well, Sorry, it seems know. like most of you who have posted recently know exactly what you're doing wrong, self sabotage procrastination. Now is the time to start doing something about it. And just one piece of advice, if you 
have decided, okay, I'm going to stop this habit by doing A, B, and C, and you do it once, great. The second day you fail miserably, that doesn't mean you give it up. It just means you fail one day, you keep, you get up and keep going again. That's right. Thanks, Bridge. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about um, with this uh, set of questions for this learning portfolio that A this week is the word count. So here we've got 300 to 400 words allocated for the module. So what this, there are four questions. So you're looking at an average of 100 words per answer, okay? So it's not 400 words per for each question. That's almost the length of the whole assignment. So just about 100 words for each one. Notice with the SMART goals, you only need to put the goal itself. You don't need to put any background information. So this for this one, you might only spend 50 words, which means you've got a little bit more to answer maybe this one, which is longer and has more components. So remember too, that a lot of these module, uh, sorry, learning portfolio A and B questions have multiple questions within the question. Make sure you read them carefully and answer every little part, okay? Any questions? Thanks, Virginia. Um, no worries, Emma. Thanks, yeah, everyone. Thank you, art students. See you later. Thank you. Best of luck. Ta. So um, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Stop making wishes, set some goals, and then start uh, working towards them, people. It's your future. So. There's one question there saying yes. regarding activities for weekly modules, are there activities to be done and uploaded each week? Plus the three to 400 words mentioned here today, for example, which must be included as part of the LPA. Okay, so with the activities that are in the study guide, you don't need, we encourage that you do them. Sometimes there are answers um, in the study guide, but you don't have to submit them to your tutor or support tutor. Um, so you don't need to submit those activities. You'll do your work on your module, oh, sorry, your learning portfolio A, and you'll just save that for the moment. And you'll then next week, uh, this week, at the end of this week, you'll complete your answers for module two. At the end of next week, you'll complete your answers for module three. During week four, you can tidy that up. Maybe you have a new thought or a new example you want to include, edit it, and then you'll upload that into Moodle. So um, if you click on the, on the link, uh, for the assessment for learning portfolio A, it'll take you to the place where you can upload that. And on Moodle, there are, and in the steps by the students, there are instructions for uploading your assignment. If you're stuck, just get in touch with one of the um, lecturers and we'll give you a hand. Okay, so how are you feeling about your studies this week, people? Nice nods. Happy for you to stamp this slide if you want to use the annotation tools. Add something to the chat. Oh, Trix just had a look at uh, Forest. It looks interesting. I plan to have a look too, Trix. Yeah, I'm a, I am sort of wonder if it might be, it's taken a bit to download. I was looking at the images. Might be a procrastination tool if you play with it too much, but if it can <laughs> motivate you to sit and study, then yes, it might be, might be worth it. Yeah. I'll tell you in... Uh, about 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, I usually just put my phone away or turn it off for a little while. It works just as well. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, good. Boy, good. Kiara, that's great that you're feeling about this week, good about the studies and you're feeling supported. Nice to hear that. Um, Hayley, if you're feeling stressed, then get in touch with your support lecturer, please, um, so they can talk through... Um, what's getting in the way, what's stopping you to mitigate some of that stress and anxiety. Uh, retention's not your friend today, Nicole. Thank goodness you took awesome notes, right? Thank goodness also that we have a recording you can look back on if you need to. And Carla's feeling more positive this week. That's good. And that's a really good sign. I think that a lot of people... Uh, we're feeling a bit overwhelmed. It's normal that people feel overwhelmed in week one as you're still getting used to everything. And now that you've started to become more familiar and you can start a rhythm, that's that's great. Good. Uh, good, Kane. Glad you're feeling supported too. 
Okay, so thank you. Uh, there's a, it's good to see so many people in the forums uh, chatting away, but um, don't forget to have a read of someone's and then just respond with a nice hello, nice to see you here. Maybe there's something they've talked about that you can resonate to with. Um, just jump on it and respond to people too, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, and, and that feel way free becomes... to form. Feel so, free to form groups and have a chat. Um, uh, Trixie, we are not using Teams for prep skills, are we? No, we're not using Teams. Oh. I saw Kyle pop oh. that chat in. Yeah. Um, I did post on the study groups forum over the weekend, uh, suggesting that online students, instead, if you haven't got people close by, maybe start an online study group a little bit like yeah. what we're doing here. And we run a, a shut up and write group where you log on at the same time, um, you set your goals or what you want to achieve, and then you literally mute and stop video, go away for 40 minutes and do your work. Then you come back, have a chat, how'd you go, what I'm going to achieve for the next 40 and do that. And it's a great motivation tool. It keeps you accountable to the other people in the group and it's just a way of making you sit down and do it so maybe there might be one or two or three or four <laughs> online people that might want to um start that happening thanks Trix. um there's some lovely things in the chat um felicity can i just say if you're um if you're feeling really heavy about stuff then just contact your support lecturer uh, you might feel fine but yeah the office there yeah. eh? Support lecturer, your access coordinator, reach Correct. out. Okay, yeah. everybody's here. That's right. Okay. Our job is to support you. Um, your success is our success. For that. Yeah. So next week, uh, module three is about learning styles and personality types. And it's um, sometimes I think we should teach that before we teach this unit because there, <laughs> you get to know what your, or you get a picture of what your learning styles might be. And, and then you get to take all of these strategies and individualise them. So next week is so much fun um, and it will really start you doing on that journey of critical self-reflection as you start to look at those results from those tests and see, think, does this apply to me? Um, how can I make myself better with this knowledge? So week th uh, module three is a lot of fun. So I'm going to turn off the recording and Trixie's too. And then...